the nations. It will be their kingdom. So let's quickly jump, because there's another vision that this time Daniel has it. It's in Daniel 7. So it says this, Daniel 7. It says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, now that's Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, but Nebuchadnezzar is classed like a father to him. Daniel saw a dream and visions in his mind as he lay in his bed, and then he wrote the dream down and related the following summary of it. Daniel said, I was looking in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. The great sea is the Mediterranean. So whatever's coming out into the vision consumes the Mediterranean. And so here it says, says, okay, and four great beasts were coming up from the sea, different from one another. So whatever these beasts are, they consume what is happening around the Mediterranean Sea, especially concerning the land of Israel. And so it says, they're coming up different to one another, four. The first was like a lion and had the wings of an eagle. So let's do this here. So we've got a, I'm not an artist again, so I'm just going to do, um, there's his mane, there's his eyes, and he's got the wings like the wings of an eagle. Okay. So, it says, I kept looking until its wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the human mind was also given to it. And then behold, another beast, the second one resembling a bear. I don't know how to do a bear. Um, so I'm just going to do this grizzly bear. But it looks like a teddy bear. Um, okay. And but its one side is raised up more than its other side. Okay, so here it says there's a bear. And it was raised up on one side, and three ribs were in its mouth. I mean, that's the big, and no one really knows what these ribs actually are, which is funny. Um, but it says three ribs are in its mouth, and then it says between its teeth. And thus they said to it, Arise, devour much meat. So the three ribs say to the bear, Arise, devour much meat. After this, I kept looking, and behold, another one like a leopard. So, I'm just going to write L for leopard, because I can't even draw a leopard. So, it says, um, it says, there's a leopard, and on its back, it had four wings like a bird. So, there's four wings here, on the back of the leopard. And, it says here, the beast also had four heads. There's four heads to the beast. A leopard with four heads and four wings. And it says, and dominion was given to it. And after this I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrifying and extremely strong, and it had large iron teeth, and it devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet. And it was different from all the other beasts that were before it, it had ten horns. So we've got this aggressive iron type creature with, um, with teeth of iron and ten horns. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten horns. And it says, while I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, comes up. Um, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. So this little, let's put the little horn here, 
and it pulls out three of those big horns. Okay, the little horn. And then it says, and behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttered great boasts. Now look, I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, and his vesture, his clothes were like white wool, white snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. And the thr his throne was ablaze with flames, its wheels were a burning fire, a river of fire was flowing out and coming out before him. Thousands upon thousands were attending him, myriads upon myriads were standing before him. The court sat, and the books were open. And then, it says, I, then I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the little horn was speaking. And I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and given to burning fire. So you're going to have thrones set up here. And the result of those thrones being set up and the court being adjourned is that this beast will be killed and it will be thrown into everlasting fire. Be thrown into the fire. And it says, as for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. So here, this is dealt with, and these other, all these other beasts, they're allowed to live for a little bit of time. All these other beasts are allowed, they're given a period of time which they can live. But they're not kingdoms. They're not kingdoms, but these still are around in some way, if that makes sense. They're given life, but not rule. And they kept looking in the night visions, behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man was coming, and he came up to the ancient days, was presented before him, and to him was given a dominion, glory, and a kingdom. And the peoples and nations and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. So now we have the Son of Man. Now, he explains this vision in Daniel 7. So this is Daniel 7, this is Daniel 2. The explanation is in verse 15 onwards. And it says, Daniel's alone. And so he's made to know the exact meaning of this. So in verse 17 it says, These great beasts, which are four in number, are four kings who will arise from the earth. But the saints of the highest one will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever for all ages to come. So remember what I said here, the stone is Jesus, but he does so on behalf of the saints. The Son of Man does so on behalf of the saints. The saints will inherit the kingdom. And then it says, for all ages. Then I desired to know the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and it devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet, and the meaning of the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up. And before then, three of them fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth uttering great boasts, which was larger in appearance than its associates. Now look at this, this little horn. This little horn makes war with the saints and overpowers them. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the Highest One. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. So what we have here is the bee, this little horn of this beast, persecutes the saints until this time. So he's going to hammer Israel big time until God reverses it. That's what the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. So he said then, verse 23, then he said the fourth beast which will be a fourth kingdom on the earth which will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth and tread it down and crush it. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings will arise. So now we know what the horns represent, they represent ten kings. 
And what's very interesting about the Ten Kings is, um, is the horn, the idea of a horn speaks of power, ruling power. But as we'll see in Revelation, they actually don't have their own kingdom initially. They don't have their own kingdom, but they come out of the same kingdom, which is Rome, but in this situation, it's reconstituted Rome. Rome gets reconstituted in some way. East and West come together at the time when it's iron and clay. And so it says here, he will speak out against the Most High. So this little horn is going to stand against God. He is anti-Christ. He is anti-Christ. He'll speak against God. And it says, um, he'll speak against the Most High and he will wear down the saints of the highest one. So the saints are just going to go through this process where they're worn and worn and worn and worn down till they're nothing, until they they have no power. And then it says, he... And he will make, he will intend to make alterations in times and in law. Now there's a lot to this that we can look at in terms of the way it's happened before. Because when there was a king of the Greeks who came, and he's also presented as a little horn in, in Daniel as well. So we'll look at this maybe next week. But he makes changes in the law. He forbids Jews to circumcise their kids to keep Shabbat, they have to keep Greek culture. So he makes changes to Israel's law and he forbids them keeping God's law and he punishes them for doing so. That is probably what this is speaking about, times and, and, and laws. They will be given into his hand for time, times and half a time, which is three and a half years. This little horn is going to get absolute power for three and a half years. Remember when we looked at the 70th week of Daniel? Halfway through, the Antichrist is himself and says, I am God. And then he gains power for 42 months, which is three and a half years. Absolute power. This is the same little horn. So this, what I'm saying is, this fourth beast, Started here at the time of, before the time of Jesus in 331 BC, but it comes again at the end. It comes again. It's part of the same beast. It's the same beast. And so here it says, "The court will sit for judgment, and his dominion will be taken away, annihilated, and destroyed forever." Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. So all these other territories are going to come under the control of the saints. Right? Not the rule, not the, the power, not as empires, but the territories. Greece will come under, Persia will come under, Syria will come under, and the areas around Babylon will come under the saints. And so that's the end of that vision. Now, lastly, I want to go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. And we'll look at chapter 13 and chapter 17. Because this beast, this fourth beast is speaking about again. So look, let's look at this, chapter 13, verse 1. And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. Now the dragon is Satan. The seashore, the sea here, is not the Mediterranean. We'll see in, in, in Revelation chapter 17 that it is all peoples and nations and tribes, it's Gentiles. The dragon stands on the edge of the Gentile world. And it says, then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. So the beast, remember, is both king and kingdom. It's both. So the kingdom and the king are coming out of the Gentile world. Because of this, I don't see 
Maybe he might have some Jewish blood, but I don't see Antichrist as being a Jew. I see him as coming out of the Gentile world. So maybe he has Jewish blood, but he's not Jew. He's Gentile. What's interesting is the other beast that comes with him, which is called the false prophet, he comes out of the land, which is possibly indicating he's Jewish. But the Antichrist, this beast, is Gentile. And it says he had ten horns. Is the ten horns. So he has ten horns and seven heads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven heads. And it says, and on his horns were ten diadems. So power to, they've got power. And on his heads were blasphemous names. So he's full of blasphemy. He's completely anti-God. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard. Whoa, that's, that's Greece. So he's like Greece. And his feet were like those of a bear. Oh, that's the Medes and the Persians. Which leaned on one side because the Persians were more powerful than the Medes. The three ribs that come out, people believe, some people believe they're three territories that um, they had control over. So there were three districts of power. There was the Medes district, the Persian district, and the Babylonian district. That's what some people believe. But no one really actually knows for sure what they represent. But they are the power, they speak of being power hungry because they tell him, come and arise, devour much meat. So the, they've got feet like the feet of the bear. And then it says here, and it had a mouth, his mouth was like the mouth of the lion, which is Babylon. Mm -hmm. So the things he says are things that are formed from the Babylon spirit. The Babylon spirit speaks through the Antichrist. And so it says here, I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain and his fatal wound was healed. Now we'll go into that in the future. But it says here, the whole earth was amazed and they followed after the beast and they worshiped the dragon because he's gave his authority to the beast. So they're giving worship and adoration to this beast. Okay, now let's jump to Revelation 17. There is a Babylon system that works both politically but it also works religiously. And the religious aspect of this kingdom is pictured by a woman. She's also called a city. She's the great city. But she's a religious, speaks of religious seduction, religious harlotry. And it goes back to the time of Nimrod. Mystery, it's called Mystery Babylon. That's what she's called, Mystery Babylon. The mystery religions were founded in Babylon. And a lot of people think under him, either under his wife or someone like that. And so it says here, Then one of these seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. So the many waters here, this harlot, this mystery Babylon, is sitting on them. So we'll see what the, the waters are in a minute. With whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. So here we have a beast, but it's, it's a scarlet beast. And it's not Barney the dinosaur either, because he got seven heads, okay? Just like, he's not a nice piece of work. He's not, I love you, you love me. He's like, you love me and I will control you. And so here, he has seven heads and ten horns. Okay. The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a cup full of abominations and of unclean things. Okay, now let's jump ahead, because I don't want to focus on the woman. So look at verse 7. The angel said to me, Why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was, 
and is not, and is about to come out, out of the abyss and go to destruction. So the abyss is the pit. It's connected to the place of the dead. He was and is not, but he's going to come out. There's going to be a death and resurrection, but in two ways, of a person and of the empire. The beast was, the empire was and is not, but it'll come out of the dead. The empire is going to be resurrected. The person is going to be resurrected. His empire is going to be resurrected. The beast is the same beast right till the end. You see that? It's, he comes back, but when the empire comes up, you see what the beast looks like. He's a bit of everything. All these different aspects of these different empires come up and get embodied in the final one. That's what we learn from these visions. So it says here, those who dwell on the earth, whose name has not been written in the book of life, they, they will wonder when they see the beast who was and is not and will come. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. So the beast has seven heads. He says there's seven mountains. Now, Rome is built on seven hills. Jerusalem is also built on seven hills. There's going to be something of Babylon that's embodied in Rome and in Jerusalem. How, how can we say about Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem will be Sodom and Egypt. That's what the Bible calls Jerusalem in the end. It's not going to be a godly place. It's going to be a very ungodly place. But mountains in Scripture speak of kingdoms. And so what we could say is that from the time of the Assyrians, whether it's Assyria, Babylon, Medes, Persians, Greeks, Romans, up to the present day, up to the final one, whatever mountains there have been, it's all the same. In a sense, it's all the same. It's all one beast. Seven different kingdoms would have contributed, all concerning the land. And the first one that concerned the land of Israel was Egypt, or concerned the people of God, Israel was Egypt. You had Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greeks, Romans, and then you're going to have the final one, the seventh. You could look at it that way. Seven kingdoms that consume the people of Israel and their land. And then it says here, the beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is one of the seven. So the seven becomes the, the eighth. There is a change when Antichrist is ruling between his kingdom when he's going out to conquer and when he has absolute control. And there's a difference between Antichrist who was then and the one who emerges as I am God. He dies and he's resurrected. When he dies and he's resurrected, he becomes something else. So he's both the seven and the eighth. He's both the seven and the eighth. He becomes something else because he becomes possessed by Satan himself. Judas was not always possessed by Satan. But in the middle of the night, when it came to betraying Jesus, then when he becomes the traitor, then Satan enters into him. So it will be in the end, when he becomes a traitor to God's people, then Satan will enter into him and he will become something else. He will look very different from the beginning, then he will look at the end. He's the seventh, but he's also the eighth. And he goes to destruction. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings, who have not yet received a kingdom. So these ten that come out don't actually have a kingdom initially, but they come out of this empire. And three of them we saw Antichrist by him springing up. Three of them are removed. And he rules with the other seven. And so here they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. 
and then they have one purpose, they give their power and authority to the beast. And it says in verse 15, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. The woman which you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now look at this. We just summarize all of this. The last days, in some way, is going to replay everything that's gone on before. Everything that's gone on before with Greece, with Rome, with the Medes and Persians, and with Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. There are elements of all of these things that are going to occur again at the end. And it could be embodied in the final beast, which that little pawn, the Antichrist, will persecute God's people. But Jesus comes at the end of it, and not only just takes away the dominion, but he crushes the whole thing. It's gone, you won't find it. These territories will be taken over by Jesus and the saints, so that an extension of life is granted. But the beast himself, this final beast, is going to be thrown into eternal fire. So this is what Antichrist comes out of. This is his whole thing. But notice that God uses Antichrist to judge Mystery Babylon. Antichrist is God's servant to bring judgment on the harlot, which is the false religious spirituality that just invades everything. And even invades the church. Yeah. Even invades the church. So God will use the Antichrist. He will use Antichrist to bring judgment. But when he's finished his purpose, God will get rid of Antichrist, this beast, and throw them into the lake of fire that goes forever and ever.